Welcome to Scam Baiting Emails. I think it's safe to predict that this four-month correspondence will be unique if for no other reason than by sheer coincidence, I happen to know the scammer personally. It all begins with this email from L. D. Holt. No, I mean from Leslie Douglas Holt. No, I mean from L. No. Period, D. No. Period Holt. Period. No, it's from L. Period, D. No. Period Holt. Except that sometimes he spells his surname with two T's instead of just one. Leslie begins, Hello, my names are Leslie Douglas Holt, and I have a business idea that could be of mutual benefit if you would be interested. Please contact me on my email. Sincerely, L.D. Holt. Wait a minute, what? Leslie Douglas Holt? What are the odds? Hello, Les. Wow, it's been a long time. What's up with you? Are you going by Leslie instead of Les these days? Last I heard, you and Janie were touring the country in your motorhome. I hope you two are still together. As for me, Barbara Ann and I are still together. And <laughs> they said it wouldn't last. I might have slowed down a little bit compared to the old days, but when I'm not in my room doing my daily affirmations, I get around. So, okay, what's your business idea? Hopefully it's better than what we tried to pull off in high school. Ever since COVID, I've been trying to think of something new to do, but I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Your pal, Rob, or as my friends call me, Rob McClinton. Soon I receive a reply from Les, but if I didn't know better, I'd think he never read my email reply to his original email. Hello, Rob. Thanks for your earliest response to my email. I contacted you after careful considerations that you might be able to undertake this project with me, details of which I shall brief you accordingly. Before the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, I was handling a rather huge transaction for a client who sadly passed away recently before we could conclude the project. Now, all I require from you is willingness, honesty, and trustworthiness, as I do not take these virtues for granted. I would need you to stand in as beneficiary to the sum of $25,162,000 U.S. dollars, $25,162,000 U.S. dollars. Be rest assured that the necessary paperwork and correspondences with the domiciliary bank are intact, as I am in direct proxy with them, so you would be guided accordingly to avoid any hitches, contradictions whatsoever. Please feel free to always ask me questions where you do not have full understanding. Once we make progress, the funds should be transferred to your bank account. We must be proactive, and once I get a positive response from you, I will provide you with more details, as we need to conclude the entire transfer process in less than four working days. Be informed that I am offering you $10,065,000 U.S. dollars of the total sum for your role in this transaction, which is about 40% of the total amount, and $3,808,294.63 U.S. dollars will be given to charity organizations, particularly to those devastated by the pandemic, under your supervision, while I will keep the remaining. The funds were in pound sterlings until they were insured and moved to the domiciliary bank, so it is no joke. I would need to know more about you. Occupation? Legal status? Married with kids? Any valid identification? Telephone number? I await your prompt response to my email. Kind regards, Leslie. Jeez, he makes it sound as though he doesn't even know me. I had hoped that with the passage of time, Les would have learned to forgive and forget. Or at least one of those two things. Well, if you're like me, then you know one thing I won't put up with is someone who knows me pretending that he doesn't know me. Hello, Les. Hey, did you see the few questions I asked you in my earlier reply? Before we get down to business, I want to make sure you and I are on good terms now. As you'll recall, the last time I saw you was when you and Janie climbed aboard the last train to Clarksville. That was right after the incident for which I still hold deep regret. Obviously, this doesn't excuse anything that may or may not have happened, but both of us had had a lot to drink that night. Because I almost never drink alcohol, with the exception of the sacrificial wine, and Janie is so petite, I swear neither of us really knew what we were doing. It certainly wasn't planned. It just happened. Believe me, both of us felt terrible afterwards, especially the second time that night. You said some pretty harsh things at the time, and doing business together requires mutual respect on both sides, and also mutual trust from both of us. 
When I first saw your previous, earlier email, it made me so happy to think you must be reaching out to me with a brand new key to our friendship. But the fact that your reply to my reply was 100% business language and not at all personal leads me to fear you still feel as cold as ice toward me. So you don't have to go looking through your pile of emails for them. Here are the questions I had asked. What's up with you? Are you going by Leslie instead of Les these days? Are you and Janie still together? If so, you're a lucky guy. I can tell you from experience that she's pretty hot. Where are you living these days? Les, I truly would love to work with you again on this business idea that you have, but only if I know we're friends again. On the other hand, conversely, if you still hate me, then I just wouldn't feel comfortable working closely with you. Please take just a couple of minutes to give your honest, candid responses to my questions so I know where we stand. Once I know that, like me, you've reached the point where once again we can trust and enjoy working with each other, I know I'll be very interested in learning the details of your business plan. But it doesn't look as though Les has learned to forgive and forget, at least not both at once. After another long period of silence, I give it one more try. Hello, Les. It has been two months since I replied to your reply to my response to your original email, but I haven't heard back from you. Because your original email unexpectedly came to me out of the blue, I had hoped that meant you decided to forgive and forget whatever may or may not have happened that night between Janie and me. I have always thought of our friendship as being evergreen and always there, and I would do almost anything to return things to the way they were. Do you plan to write back to me so we can catch up on life and also to discuss your business idea and how we might work together to make it come true? Please let me know. I really miss our friendship, because that's what friends are for. P.S. If you do reply to this message, be sure to include information about the business idea you mentioned. I am experiencing a cash flow situation, and making some money while working side by side with a friend sounds like the perfect solution. That P.S., by the way, had two goals. One, to make me sound as though I just might fall for some sort of get-rich-quick scheme, and two, to plant the seed, hopefully to be sown later, of my not having whatever surprise advance fee requirement that ultimately was sure to pop up. That way I could say, but I told you I'm experiencing a cash flow problem. Finally, I managed to lure Les out of his shell and into a real communication with his old buddy, me. Hi, Rob. I have been out of town for an extended family vacation and thought to leave things until I returned, hence I didn't get back to you. Rob, let me start by letting you know I have long moved on from the past, and quite frankly, I think it was more for my own sanity and general health. I came to realize that actions that actually hurt us are simply so because they come from our very close pals or even family. So thinking that ugly incident came from my pal made a lot of sense down the road. I was hurt, no doubt, but I think there's a lot more the future holds for us all only if we respectfully move on and give it another shot. I decided to make this move with an old pal, but with a little bit of major changes so I could naturally rekindle what we once shared. So if you don't mind, I am asking that we make it happen. And after our success, we meet up somehow, somewhere, and someday and talk things over. So do bear with me as this took quite a while to decide and it is working so far. Again, Rob, I will say it. You hurt me real bad but it's in my past now, and I forgive you, but please respect me going forward like I would you and Barbara. And if you will, please do not remind me how lucky I am to have Janie. She's an amazing being, and I hope my plans work out perfectly so we can all be together again someday. You mentioned your cash flow situation. I hope it's not so bad. Or is it absolutely wonderful, Rob? Rob, I can tell you Clarksville is a healer in so many ways, but we found various interests and life endeavors, some of which I have suffered losses and some huge gains, too. I'll stop here and hope to hear from you again. And please remember, I want us to do this in such a way it brings us back to a better place than we ever had. Have a wonderful weekend ahead. Less. Wow, that is so cool of Les to be able to find a way to let the past be the past and the future be more of the past, only not yet. Unfortunately for me, 
A lot had happened in the months since that first email from Les. Hello, Les. Sorry for not being able to reply until now. We were without electricity for 18 hours. And when Ian... Remember when they used to name hurricanes only after women? When Ian finally left, the damage it left behind was unbelievable. And we're in the middle of the state. Hurricanes never, until now, go so far inland. It looks like a war zone here. I can't express how happy I am to learn of your willingness to resume our friendship after that big interruption. Again, I wish I could turn back the clock and do some things differently, but since they haven't yet invented time travel, it sounds like you've been busy with the losses and also the huge gains. I'm guessing you mean financially? You always were the one who was way ahead of the rest of us when it came to spotting new opportunities and, more importantly, somehow knowing the best way to go about making it financially successful. Remember our genuine gelato home delivery biz? Not bad for a couple of high school kids. As for my own cash flow situation, if you'd asked me about it a month ago, I would have said it's precarious. After this past week, though, disastrous would be a much more accurate description. Amazingly, the house itself didn't really sustain any significant damage except for the plumbing and the roof. The flooding apparently overwhelmed the city's water supply, the pipes backed up, and it all poured into the house. The garage was simply swept away as though it were a candy wrapper caught in a breeze. Okay, maybe that's a lame metaphor to use to describe it, but the entire experience was unbelievable and ferocious and just seemed so unreal and the roof probably will cost more to replace than we paid for the entire house. And now the insurance companies say they can't pay off people's claims because this was a force majeure, which of course is Latin for you're screwed. I don't know how they can get away with that. What's the point of having insurance? Anyway, I don't mean to sound as though I'm whining. Some people lost their lives in this disaster. Probably I should count my blessings, as Barbara Ann keeps telling me. Speaking of Barbara Ann, about a year ago, she started a women's poker club. They meet once a week, although, of course, last week was canceled. Well, I guess I should put on my boots again and go back to clearing the debris out of the backyard. I just want you to know it's great to reconnect with you. Pals, Rob. P.S. With all this whining about my problems, I almost forgot to ask you about this mysterious business idea you mentioned— or has that opportunity already been taken? If so, don't worry about it. I know life will present us with other opportunities in the future. I just don't want you to think I'm ignoring whatever it was you originally mentioned. Maybe Les hasn't been as quick to forgive as I had thought. Another week goes by before I try once more. Hello, Les. Did you receive my email reply to your email last week? You've still got me curious about this new business idea you mentioned earlier, or have you decided not to do whatever it was after all? It turns out Les hasn't yet bailed on me. Hello, Rob. I received your emails and must say I was overwhelmed by the contents, particularly the response from the insurance company. Sympathizing with you would seem as though there wasn't a reason to celebrate, but that shouldn't be the case, as I am very much aware lives were lost. So having my friends here after Ian is a great reason to celebrate. I am sure the damages and cost of repairs would be dealt with real soon, as if my timing is right, then we should be able to take care of it all by next week. Rob, you would be standing in as a beneficiary of some investment funds that I have an indirect access to. But before then, I need you to understand that it is not just going to be you and I alone this time, as there is need for an attorney to prepare necessary paperwork to back up this project. Now, I am going to need you to send me any valid copy of your ID so I can have him prepare the documents in your name, that is, with the details on the ID you will send me. Once this is done, I shall then guide you through the necessary steps to ensure we do not make any mistakes, as I want the funds to be in our custody within the next four business days. I will also need you to let me know what financial institutions you hold bank account or accounts with, and for how long such accounts have been in existence. Once again, accept my sympathy over your loss while we look forward to better days ahead. I shall expect to hear from you soonest. Hello, Les. First, 
Before I write anything else, I do apologize for my delay in responding to your most recent email. I have barely slept the last week, spending every moment either trying to salvage at least parts of my house or filling out tons of forms and waiting forever in the temporary FEMA office, which hopefully will be making available emergency financial assistance to those of us whose lives were turned upside down and back up again by the hurricane. If we need an attorney, we're in luck. A cousin of mine is pretty well known to lawyers and barristers almost around the world, and I think it's safe to say he owes me a favor. He lives in whole England, but both practices law and lectures on legal topics around the world. I'm sure he'd gladly do the legal paperwork stuff for us for free. He's very, very good at legal stuff, having written legal textbooks, lectured on legal topics around the world, and two or three times, I believe, arguing points of law before the world court. If possible, you could even scan the necessary documents and email them to me, and I in turn will email them to him. What does it mean to stand in as a beneficiary of some investment funds? What type of ID do you need? I no longer have a driver's license due to the effects of TES. Is there something I can use instead of a driver's license? Financial Institution, Citizens Bank and Trust. I've had this account forever, approximately 35 years, although when I opened the account, the bank had a different name. I think this is the third name they have had since I opened the account. I think that's everything you asked for, Les. Let me know if I forgot something. And once again, I do apologize for my delay in responding. Pals, Rob. P.S. I don't think I ever asked where you're living now. Still in Clarksville? Move back to Chicago? Hi, Rob. It's good to hear from you again. I got a bit worried the aftermath of Ian might be taking more toll on you than I imagined. Hearing about that cousin of yours was really cool, but I will surely let you know when we would be needing him, as right now, almost every step of our project has long kickstarted and working perfectly already. However, we might be needing his services after we have successfully transferred the entire sum to your bank account, which, by the way, I need to ask what the highest sum per transaction has been on your accounts. That is, have you received or sent out sums in excess of fifty to 100000 100 to 200000 or above? As right now, I can only tell you I have worked out possible investment plans for us through the services of a South Dakota investment trust. South Dakota offers deferred tax strategies that we will discuss later. The wealthy are moving millions of funds there for legacy wealth strategies. It's the new Switzerland, and the corporate veil is completely secret and with no disclosure of ownership. You can look them up on website so you have more insight on them. Rob, more details on that would be made available to you as time goes on. But first, we must concentrate on the basics just yet. Once I receive your feedback on the highest sum per transaction on your bank accounts, that is, have you received or sent out sums in excess of fifty to 100000 100 to 200000 or above, and your valid ID, anyone can serve the purpose, mustn't be your driver's license. Rob, as you know, it's been a while now, and like I must mentioned in one of my emails, we have found various interests and endeavors, which has brought us some good luck and bad too. I actually remained in Clarksville until I met this cool dude from the Hellenic Republic, and he helped me secure not just an accounting job, but one that is quite lucrative and takes me all around the world each time I have to move with their vessel. We shall play catch up sometime in the near future, and you will have to thank me eventually over a nice dinner with the bills on you, pal. Now kindly get back to me sooner with answers to my questions above so we can proceed further. Looking to hear from you, Rob, and once again, I'd say take it easy on the stress. You don't want to break down on me now, okay? Hello, Les. When you say received or sent sums, I assume you mean either I mailed a check or received a check which I then deposited. As you probably recall, I'm a bit of a Luddite when it comes to technology. For a long time, I wouldn't even use email because it seemed so much less personal than a real letter. Obviously, I have changed my mind about that. If you mean received or sent out sums electronically, or whatever the actual term for that is, then I guess my answer has to be zero. 
when I was a kid, and I would call the phone number for the correct time, remember those? The time was sponsored by a bank. Before telling us the time, they'd say something like, the correct time is brought to you by XYZ Bank, where your canceled check is your receipt. To this day, when I buy something in a store or somewhere, and they ask if I want a receipt, I automatically reply, my canceled check is my receipt. If it's some young person behind the cash register, usually they look at me as though I've lost some or all of my marbles. But it's true. I have almost an entire filing cabinet filled with canceled checks going back to the days when we both had long hair. If you're asking what's the biggest check I've ever written or received, I'm sure there must have been some big ones, but I don't know what the biggest ones would be. All I can think of immediately offhand is when the insurance company for the CTA sent me a settlement check for $2,200. One reason that stands out in my memory is that my cousin Ollie, the lawyer I think I already mentioned to you, literally hit the roof when he learned I had settled for what he said was a pittance, very little in his opinion, and that I was an idiot for not having a lawyer or an attorney handle it for me. As far as the biggest check I've ever written, probably it was when we went halves on the stiff breeze. But that was so long ago, I can't visualize in my mental eyes the amount. By any chance, do you remember? I'm sure we each paid one half of the down payment. That was so long ago, I doubt it's even in my filing cabinet, but I can search there if it's really important. Oh, and probably when I made the down payment on the house all those years ago, it might have been around $2,000. My monthly mortgage payment was $789, but I'm sure I've written bigger checks than that. I don't know if you remember, but in school, my two worst subjects were geography and history. That's an understatement which I'll use as an excuse for not knowing what the Hellenic Republic is. I looked it up on the Internet's free encyclopedia. If I read correctly, then Hellenic Republic is just a fancy word for Greece, right? Is that where Helen of Troy comes from? Does that mean you live in Greece when you're not traveling for your accounting job? When you say your current job takes you all around the world each time you move with your vessel, I don't quite know what you mean by that. I mean, I'm not positive what moving with their vessel means, but I'd be interested to learn about that. What you're doing these days sounds fascinating. Does Janie travel with you? I have to admit that getting paid to travel all over the world sounds like a pretty sweet gig. What is it you actually do for your clients around the world? It must be more than just regular bookkeeping, which I'm sure could be handled by faxes and phone calls, yes? Oh, and before I forget, I'm attaching a picture of my passport for my valid ID that you requested. It's kind of an old photo, but the passport doesn't expire for a couple of years, so I assume that qualifies as valid ID. I'll try to take it easy on the stress. What was the name of that, um... Medicine we used to use to get that super mellow feeling. I, I want to say G's, but it's been a long time and I'm not exactly famous for my excellent memory. Whatever it was called, I wouldn't mind having a supply of those right now. Hi, Rob. Those are quite age-long memories you dared to bring back, but it's a good thing to remember the old days sometimes. Well, I simply meant electronically, that is, inflow and outflow. Yes, Hellenic Republic is a fancy word for Greece, if you like, but no, I do not live there. On-deck instant accounting is a challenging one, but it entails more than just taking stock, records of silos, or tonnage of grains for the clients, as I serve as an English intermediary in some cases, which comes with its own commission. But not to worry, you'll further understand it somewhere down the road. Rob, the ID you sent is just okay, and I shall keep you informed as soon as the time is right. Please, take it easy on meds of any kind at all. We aren't getting younger, and that also means we can't just take those meds to get the mellow feeling anymore. Okay, I want to make it clear that I never have taken any kinds of meds that weren't prescribed for me by either a doctor or someone who was planning to go to medical school. You never know what government agency might be reading your emails, so for the record... You got nothing on me, coppers. I didn't do nothing. Where, where was I? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Rob, I must say I quite agree with your cousin on the settlement from the insurance company. But again, the mistake has been made right. I shall keep you posted, pal. A few days later, I receive another update from my pal. Hello, Rob. How are you doing? I thought to immediately request your account details so we can get things going immediately. You don't have to worry about coming out of pocket, as I can understand your predicament, and needless to say, I have already worked out the financing of this project, as it is highly capital-intensive. I look forward to hearing from you soon, pal. And how have you been getting by? Get back to me, ASAP. Hello, Les. By account details, I assume you mean my banking info? I don't know what else it might be, but you never know. This is pretty private stuff, so I assume it's for your eyes only. And I give him the name and address of a real bank, but the account number and the routing number are fake. I'm pretty sure that's everything. What will you be using it for? I seem to recall some confusion earlier this year about the routing number. Apparently, banks have more than one, but I'm pretty sure the routing number above is the correct one. I'm glad to hear you've worked out the financing for this project. I don't think I've improved in my mastery of small but crucial details. I'm still what some people call a big picture guy, you know, whatever that means. And at the moment, my pockets are pretty empty. How have you been getting by? Well, the honest answer in a word is barely. But I don't want to sound as though I'm whining about it. I'm sure someone somewhere has it even worse than I do, which makes me feel a little better. Hi, Rob. It's good to know you're moving on from the devastating effects of Ian, and honestly, I do not think you are whining at all. Well, our impending project is highly capital-intensive. Hence, I have to make sure some funds are made available to you to enable you make the necessary payments for the paperwork and processing costs and any other expenditures as the case may be, plus a little support for you to assist with your everyday expenses while we wait for the bigger box. Wow, it really looks as though I misjudged less. I mean, obviously he cares. He really cares. Consequently, I would need you to kindly reconfirm the details below and provide answers to the questions that have not been answered. Hmm. Well, I think the main reason some of those questions have not been answered is that some of them never were asked of me, such as holder's name, name on account, swift code, holder's phone number, holder's address, is there a Bitcoin account linked to this account, Thanks once again for your prompt response, and please note that this will be needed through the entire process of the funds transfer. I look forward to hear from you. Hello, Les. By the way, I just realized I don't think you explained to me what our impending project is all about. Frankly, I can't even imagine what it is, so I, I figured I'd ask you. Off the record, would you say the project is strictly legit or are we just taking advantage of certain loopholes in their defense, kind of like when we beat Vero Beach that time and nobody could believe it? I didn't know there was other account information that you needed from me, which is why that information was missing from what I sent you earlier. So holder's name, name on the account, is Rob, a.k.a. Rob McClen. Uh, I don't have a SWIFT code. Uh, there's my phone number, my address. Is there a Bitcoin account linked to this account? No. Maybe I'm just getting too old and set in my ways, but I don't understand that stuff at all. What do we do next? Hi, Rob. I'm surprised you don't remember the details of this project, which I duly briefed you at the beginning. However, please note that it's an investment funds that we are about to have transferred from the domiciliary... Era, I can't pronounce that... The domiciliary, the domiciliary, the domiciliary, the domiciliary bank, and I need you to be more attentive and devoted as we cannot afford any mistakes whatsoever. Rob, I would say it's legit since I was the one helping with the investment before the sad demise of my client. Now we are also taking advantage of the loopholes in that I understand the system and how it works. Now, the bank account details you sent me are complete, and some funds would be made available to you so you can get started on the project, more details of which I shall brief you subsequently. 
I have had a good weekend and hope it's same for you. Hello, Les. I think your original explanation of what's going on was eclipsed by my surprise and delight at hearing from you after so long. Thanks for explaining it again. I'm not familiar with domiciliary banks. I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. What are they? Also, what is our next step? Hi, Rob. It's okay to feel that way, and I can totally relate. Domiciliary in this context simply means the bank where the funds are presently. However, before we get to that, I just need you to know that we need heavy financing all the way, and that's the reason I'm trying to ensure you have some money to enable you offset some necessary payments when the time is right. I shall keep you posted and ensure to always brief you properly each step of the way. Hope your day goes well, pal. Hello, Les. Well, you've got me there. I would have guessed domiciliary was the Greek derivation of college dorm. Thanks for explaining it. How much would you estimate are the funds that will be made available to me so I can get started on the project? Where do those funds come from? I, I know it probably comes from some sophisticated financial setup that I wouldn't understand, but it never hurts to ask. Are the required funds officially coming from me? so that your involvement is handled with ultimate discretion? Or do you also contribute some of the funds to obtain the heavy financing? I'll try to think of some more picky unish annoying questions. I don't want shit to get bored or anything. Hi, Rob. It's totally okay to ask, so you have a clear understanding of certain unfamiliar terms sometimes. For the expenditures, I am guessing between thirty to 40000 U.S. dollars would be required, but if there would be more, then I can either come in or find a way around it. Now, Rob, the official required funds would be coming from you, which is why I am also making provisions for that, as there is great need for me to act in ultimate discretion. However, here is what I need you to do in order for us to get the financial problem sorted. One, send me clear scanned copies of your driver's license, front and back sides. Two, clear scanned copies of your SSN card. Now, SSN would stand for Social Security Number. I think technically it's my SSA card, front and back sides. Or, kindly withdraw or take out your entire monies in the account you have sent me and then avail me the online access, that is, username and password, so we can get to work immediately. I shall await your prompt response, Rob, and please note that the requested details above are very confidential and would be handled as such by me. Pals, Les. Hello, Les. Wow, between thirty-five to 40000 U.S. dollars is a lot of money. Now, Les had instructed me to send clear copies of your driver's license. I don't drive because of my TES, remember? Les also wanted me to send him clear scanned copies of your SSN card, front and back sides. I know I have my Social Security card somewhere. I'll bet it's in my safety deposit box at the bank. But why do you want copies of my SSN card? I've always heard or read that for security reasons, you never should share your Social Security info with anyone. Even if I find it in my safety deposit box, I don't want to risk its being intercepted in an email that apparently is quite easy for dark web crooks to see. I don't want to seem obstructive, but I also don't understand why you need me to do what your instructions about my bank account say I should do. If I take all of my admittedly not much money from my account, where would I then put it? As for availing you the online access, I don't do my banking online because it seems much safer to go to my bank when I need to deposit a check or something. That doesn't prevent people from sending me money over the internet, though. They just wire or do some sort of automatic money transfer, uh, my disability payments, for example, directly into my account. But they don't need a password or anything to do that. Jeez, I feel so bad about sounding so negative about everything. At least I'm sure that's how I sound in this particular email. Hopefully, in all my other emails to you, I've sounded very positive and not at all negative. It's just this one time where, due to circumstances, I keep saying I can't do whatever it is we're discussing. So given all those details above, what's our next step? 
Hi, Rob. I totally understand your concerns and the need to be security conscious, too, especially with sending such vital information via email. But it was just my consideration while I was considering options on how to get the funds sent to you. Well, that shouldn't be a problem now that you've mentioned it. I will see what we can do between now and the next two weeks or thereabout to raise the funds. It's going to be a very busy one for me in the coming weeks, but I will do well to be in touch with you, though I just thought to mention this. How are you coping with the cleanup? Commenced major repairs to your property yet? I hope to hear some positive news. Pals, Les. Hello, Les. Sorry for the delay in responding to your most recent email. I had a stupid accident after me and a couple of friends spent a full day scrubbing off the muck from the kitchen floor. The next day, I was supposed to sanitize that floor. I watched a couple of YouTube videos that show you how to do it. The first guy said you have to rent special equipment for that, but the other guy said it's easy and requires only one person. I thought, he said, to mix a cup of water with five gallons of liquid bleach in a bucket. Well, guess what? I had it backwards. It was supposed to be five gallons of water with one cup of bleach. I had poured some onto the floor and was about to start spreading it with a squeegee when suddenly I threw up. And that's the last thing I remember before waking up in the emergency room. I felt so nauseous and very weak and kind of embarrassed when I kept having to explain to the nurses and doctors what had happened. They thought it was the funniest thing they had ever heard, which of course only made me feel worse. Barbara Ann has been staying at the Holiday Inn Express and didn't even know about it until after I was discharged from the hospital and took an Uber home. In the kitchen, you could see how all that bleach ate away at the surface of the floor. Now I guess I have to find a flooring repair guy who works cheap. Barbara Ann has been handling all this very well. The hotel has free Wi-Fi and cable TV and free breakfast, so, you know, for her, it's been kind of like a vacation. Jeez, I've been talking on and on about myself and haven't even asked how you're doing. How are things going? Where are you living? You indicated you left Clarksville, but I don't think you talked about where you are now. How's your health? Hopefully just the occasional ache or pain that accompanies growing older. Any luck yet with the fundraising? Pals, Rob. Hi, Rob. That's scary. How did you even imagine such combination could be right? I mean, there's too much chemical reaction involved there already. You should be careful next time. And yes, I thought I mentioned I moved to Dakota. You can best describe it as my place of rest when I'm not traveling. I haven't finalized talks for the fundraising, but I'm hopeful to get back here with some good news soon. My regards to you and your, and please be careful next time. Pals, Les. Hello, Les. Well, you might recall I got a D in chemistry. Y you moved to Dakota? North or east? What made you choose there? I'm pretty sure the winters are colder there than they are back home. Continued good luck with the fundraising. Pals, Rob. Almost a week passes before I hear from Les again. I sure hope he's been able to make much progress raising the required funds. Hi, Rob. How are you doing? It's been a while since I was able to get on here. I haven't been able to make much progress, especially as it concerns raising the required funds, but here is what I am thinking we could do. Proceed with the necessary steps towards getting the financial funds transfer and sharing the financial burdens, if any, or... You get to your bank deposit box, send me the requested SSN details for personal view and confirmation, after which I will also delete it immediately so we can get the ball rolling already. Please let me know your thoughts, as right now these are the only two possible means of getting things done, and real quick too. I am sure you shouldn't have any problem sending those details to me, knowing that they are safe with me, and this is my private email box, which is well protected, to say the least. I look forward to hearing from you sooner. Sooner as opposed to less soon? I think something got lost in the translation. But c'est la vie, as I'm told they used to say in ancient France. Hello, Les. Let's proceed with the necessary steps towards getting the final funds transfer and sharing the financial burdens, if any. I don't want to see or talk to anyone at my bank right now, for reasons I won't burden you with. 
We didn't have much money left in our joint account, and according to the bank teller, earlier this week, Barbara Ann withdrew all but $3.25, which is preposterous. I can't pay for repairs or the various bills that are piling up with $3.25. I've called her a bunch of times, but always reached her cell phone's voicemail. I'm sure when I finally reach her, I'll find out there's a logical explanation for all this. Probably a sloppy mistake by the bank teller. Although, of course, they'd never come right out and admit that. What are the necessary steps we should proceed with instead? Hi, Rob. It's good to hear from you again, and without saying much, I think I can relate with your decisions to keep away from the bank just yet. However, I want to suggest you keep trying to reach her, as I am sure she would definitely have a good reason for making such withdrawals from the bank without prior notice. I shall get back to you subsequently with more details on what we must do in order to proceed. Hoping you have a wonderful day, pals, Les. Five days later, again, I hear from Les. Hi, Rob. How are you today? I deemed it necessary to immediately inform you that I have made some progress. You need to understand that the law firm has begun the paperwork, and they are waiting for me to pay their legal fees, but I am waiting for my stockbroker to sell off my shares and credit my account so I can make payment on your behalf, as I want to assure you that this funds transfer will be concluded within this next week if we work hard enough, so we need to act promptly to get the receiving account ready so that when the investment bank requires your banking materials, we will have an account ready to receive the funds. The most important thing here is to get the bank to recognize you as the beneficiary to the funds, after which they will request your receiving bank account information. And I have found the best way to receive the funds from the investment bank is to open an offshore account with their very own corresponding bank in the UK where the funds will be transferred into. So the transfer will be seen as an in-house transfer. Secondly, Because it will be easier to transfer from an offshore account into the United States than from an inheritance account directly, and this way we can avoid the interference of the central bank in the U.S. and huge inheritance taxes both to the British government and to that of the U.S. where your account is located, but I am still doing my research and will get back to you with details of how you will set up this account with them and hopefully will get back to you with the contact information of the concerned bank official in charge of account opening after I hear from you again. Kind regards, Les. Because I've been a bit slow in responding to his recent messages, Les seems to be becoming concerned. Hello, Rob. How are you doing? I see you didn't read my previous email yet, nor responded. I hope you have resolved the bank issues with Barbara Ann or the bank now. So, the good news is, I have been able to make payment for a tangible part of the required sum for this project to get kickstarted by the lawyer. I shall attach here a copy of the receipt for the payment which I was only able to make after selling my shares. Rob, you will need to contact the corresponding bank to set up the offshore account that I mentioned earlier so we can get the receiving account ready. Below are the bank's details. Bank name, Key Quest Bank. And there's a website. I will look forward to hearing from you, pal, and please note that going forward, we have to be prompt in exchange of emails and communication in general, and I will strongly advise you keep the details of this project top secret to avoid any unforeseen problems whatsoever. And he attaches proof that, indeed, he made a payment for the tangible part of the required sum for this project. Looks pretty official to me. Whoops. Usually banks know how to spell their own names. You'd think that anyone who works at HSBC Bank would know that HSBC always is fully capitalized, but probably I'm being hypercritical. I mean, just one time doesn't... Oh, uh, yeah. Twice in the same sentence is kind of lame, but it looks like we're finally swinging into action. Hello, Les. Whom, name and title, do I contact at KeyQuest Bank? What is the email address that goes directly to that person? What should I say to him or her? I mean, in addition to Les told me to contact you. P.S. Have you done business with these guys before? I went to their website and was surprised to discover that a bunch of their links are broken. They don't go anywhere except to a page that says 404 not found. I mean, a lot of the links don't work, which doesn't seem really professional of them. 
PPS, the copy of the receipt you attach to your email is for some sort of transaction with HSBC Bank PLC in London, England. In the interest of avoiding confusion, shouldn't we be using the same bank as each other? Hi, Rob. It's good to hear from you again, but please be more prompt in your response going forward, because as you can see now, we have set the ball rolling and any delays wouldn't be in our interest. I hope you and Barbara Ann resolved the bank thing now. Anyway, let me know what I should. I must have forgotten to instruct you properly, but now that you've mentioned, let me inform you that the plan was for you to firstly have the account set up with them, which was why I only gave you their link. However, you must realize that there is no total control of what and when servers could be down, even with the largest corporate bodies, so the internet would normally give that prompt during their downtimes, which, though is a shame, but we must move on and achieve our goal, right? Now, let me firstly state that at no point in time should you mention my name to anyone in the bank, as I am basically acting as an insider here to ensure our success. Below, here are the steps you should take. One, click on the link, and it gives a link, and when opens, click on Log into Online Banking, that is just below the KeyQuest logo on your top left. Scroll down slightly below Enter Login Details and click on Online Account Opening. Fill out the form correctly and click on Apply. If that fails, then simply send an email via the address, and he gives me an email address, stating you wish to open an account with them, and I am sure your email would be responded to. Rob, the copy of the receipt I sent to you was a confirmation of the payment made to the local lawyer there in the UK who would act in proxy and help with other services until we get the money out successfully. I have put every cent I have and what's left would be sent to him after you transfer the investment sum to your our individual accounts upon conclusion of this project. So, pal, that HSBC account has nothing to do with our intent. Again, it's just for you to see the progress I made. The guy from Greece that I mentioned some time ago still does business with these guys, so you can see why I chose them. We are in safe hands, pal. I hope this email is comprehensive enough, and I look forward to hearing from you as soon as you have successfully set up the account with them so we can officially commence release application procedures, which I earnestly await. Hello, Les. Considering everything that I have been going through, the next to the last thing I need is to be told to be more prompt in my response going forward. Every day seems to bring even more problems and heartache, and I'm doing the best I can. And I don't think I need to point out that we would have saved two days if you, before you asked me to contact KeyQuest Bank, you had told me why, what I was supposed to say to them, etc. I will return to their website as soon as I am able to take some time away from dealing with all of the challenges that have come my way recently. I'm sure that opening a new bank account will require some time and concentration to make sure I give them all the right details. Speaking of details, if they ask who recommended them, am I correct in guessing they would know you as L.D. Holt, which is how you signed the original email you sent me a few months ago, rather than Les Holt? Pals, Rob. Hi, Rob. I want you to know that I meant no harm or to add to the problems you've been facing, so pardon my perceived ignorance if that's how my email came across to you. Rob, you seem to be dealing with more than you've told me, and I hope you know you can share just about anything with your pal. I might not have the financial strength to do much, but soon we would be talking differently. I acknowledge my mistakes, pal, and I hope not to make any of it, as we do not need them. If you are asked who recommended you, which I doubt they would, just say a friend did, and if you have to mention a name, then it's okay to say Stefanos did. I look forward to hearing from you, and please feel free to share whatever it is you are going through. It helps to unburden the heart a great deal. I'm not sure I trust Les enough to share whatever it is I'm going through. But at his request, I do open an online account, and for proof of my identity, I attach a copy of my passport. KeyQuest, to their credit, immediately thanks me for my application, which they say they received. So maybe they're legit after all. And a short time later, they send me a warm, personal letter of welcome. 
Dear, thank you so much for your recent account opening. We are committed to providing our customers with the highest level of service and the most innovative banking products possible. We are very glad you chose us as your financial institution and hope you will take advantage of our wide variety of savings, investment, and loan products, all designed to meet your specific needs. For more detailed information about any of our products or services, please refer to our website or visit any of our convenient locations close to you. You may contact us by email or just send us messages directly from our website. We have agents to attend to you 24-7. Our decisions are made right here with our customers' best interest in mind. We are concerned about what is best for you! Exclamation point. Please do not hesitate to contact us should you have any questions. We will contact you very shortly to ensure you are completely satisfied with the services you have received thus far. Your account is currently inactive and will be activated by your account officer who will give you your account login details. Thank you for choosing KeyQuest Bank. Best regards, Suzanne Jones. ED Business Unit. I have no idea what ED stands for. I didn't get where I am today by knowing what ED stands for, and I'm not about to start now. Still, I should update Les on our progress. Hello, Les. I have opened the account at KeyQuest Bank per your instructions. They sent me a confirmation email to confirm that they received the information. They also say my account is inactive and needs to be activated by my account officer. They haven't told me the name of the person who will be my account officer, but I assume that sometime in the future they will. What is our next step? But before Les can identify the next step for me, once again I hear from KeyQuest Bank, welcoming me and, they say, confirming my requested account type and the opening fees neither of which sounds at all familiar. Personal offshore account setup fee 2,000 pounds, 2,000 British pounds only. They continue by explaining the process of offshore banking activation for non-residents and the necessity of an identification document. But here's where it gets confusing. The name on the account isn't Rob McLenn, or Rob McLenn, or even Rob McLenn. It's Rocio Busio, who I'm sure is a fine person, but also is someone I've never heard of. But wait, there's more. For some inexplicable reason under account payable, it seems to be saying that I'm supposed to pay $2,380. That's $2,380 US dollars only. Obviously, this is a legitimate banking document because it's signed by yours in service, Mr. Elliot Carter, Account Officer, Private Banking Division. Meanwhile, Les seems delighted to hear I'm making such progress with the bank. Hi, Rob. This is good news. Thanks for the positive feedback. Please keep me posted. You also didn't mention what happened with Barbara Ann. I hope she's okay, though. I'll look forward to hearing from you. Yeah, he keeps slyly asking about Barbara Ann. I'm getting the idea that Les still hasn't totally forgiven and forgotten whatever happened between me and Janie, even though nothing at all really happened and many of the minor details are all in his imagination. But I'll just ignore his pointed mentions of Barbara Ann and stick to business. Hello, Les. KeyQuest Bank confirms that they have activated my account. They say the account name is Rocio Busio. That absolutely is a name I've never heard in my entire life. Is that someone you know? Now, that was pretty clear, wasn't it? You understand what I'm saying about the name on the account? For some reason, however, Les's comprehension is nowhere as complete as yours. Hi, Rob. I am unable to comprehend the content of your email, and no, I do not know that name. Kindly forward a copy of the email you have received from them so I can see and read through by myself. I look forward to hearing from you. Fine, I'll forward him a copy of the bank's email and see if that stimulates his comprehension. Les, below is the entire email confirmation that was sent to me by the bank. Pals, Rob. By now, Les is so confused that he seems to have forgotten my name. Rod. I am surprised. The contents of the email was quite straight to the point, and from what it says, you chose the personal offshore account and have been sent an agent account for people from U.S. and Canada. 
Pal, I know age is not on our side anymore, but we must try and make the best of what we can control. Kindly make the necessary payment to the bank's agent as stated in the email, or like I'm stating again below, so we can proceed to get our funds transfer concluded. And here he simply reprints the info the bank sent me, but in a different color ink. And he signs off with an optimistic, I'll hope to hear from you soon, Rob. Pals, less. Frankly, I'm puzzled by all this falderall, but I tell him so in a kind and diplomatic manner. Hello, Les. Frankly, I'm puzzled. I don't understand how you now are able to comprehend something that just yesterday you said was incomprehensible to you. When yesterday you said, I am unable to comprehend the content of your email, you were referring to my email of November 22, which consisted entirely of two parts. One, KeyQuest Bank confirms that they have activated my account. And two, they say the account name is Rocio Busio. Is that someone you know? I assumed number one above was easy to comprehend because all it said was that the bank confirms they have activated my account. You also said you do not know the name Rocio Busio, which is the part number two above. I assumed you were indicating you didn't comprehend why that name was on the new account. Are you now saying you do know who Rocio Busio is? If so, who is he? And why is his name on my account? Also, one small correction to something else you said in your most recent email. I didn't choose personal offshore account. I chose a simple, basic personal account. So, who is Rocio Busio and why is his name on the account? And B, what do we do next? And now apparently just because I said I was puzzled, Les replies, Hi, Rob. Now you've got it all confused, but I will attempt to clarify things as best as possible. In your email, you did mention that the you had opened an account with the bank and received a confirmation to that effect. Then I got excited over the news. But thereafter, you sent me an email saying the bank opened your account but used another name, Rocio Busio, so I said forward me a copy of the email you received from the bank. Now you forwarded the email from the bank and I read through and realized you were being asked to pay for the security deposit that would activate the account without problems. And for the same reason, I then replied with my very last email to you, confirming I understand what the bank is saying and that the name Rocio Busio is the name of their receiving agent as shown in the forwarded email. And now he reprints that same bank account info again, but this time in red, and apparently to demonstrate how serious this all is, highlighted in yellow. Now, I do hope I have answered your questions and you understand everything now, and I urge you to ensure that payment is made to the account as instructed to enable the bank proceed with the final account opening procedures. Wishing you a wonderful weekend ahead. This seems to be turning into a battle of wills. And I didn't get where I am today by losing a battle of wills. Hello, Les. Thanks for attempting to clarify this bizarre banking stuff. There are two things that don't seem to make sense. Number one, this seems to be saying I'm supposed to send $2,380 to someone. Because obviously banks don't charge a fee for opening a checking account, it seems that someone somewhere made an error in processing the necessary forms. Number two, I think you're saying that the name on the account is Rocio Busio because that's the name of someone who works for the bank. But if indeed for some reason I did need to pay the bank $2,380, certainly that payment wouldn't be made to some person's personal checking account. It would be made directly to the bank. You see what I mean? Also, that confirmation email confirms that they have activated my account and that the name on that new account indeed is Rocio Busio. I'm not sure whom we should contact to correct the above errors. Can you contact them directly to straighten them out? Or do you need me to do it because I'm the person who tried to open the new account? That should clear it all up. I mean, you understand what I'm saying, right? But probably you're not as pig-headedly stubborn as Les is turning out to be. Here's his reply, which I will quote word for word in a verbatim manner. I think you're the one who's getting it all wrong here. 
From the bank's email to you, everything is okay and normally. In cases where agents are used for certain locations and services, there is nothing wrong with it, as the agent in question has absolutely no business with customers, provided you have your payment receipt slip sent to the bank to confirm your payments. I hope I have clarified this, and I sincerely hope you will proceed to do the needful tomorrow. Send a copy of your payment slip to the bank so we can proceed further. As for your request to straighten out, I do not see anything to straighten out here, pal. I chose this bank to make our deal easy, so you should follow my lead and trust me to deliver as always. Rob, I look forward to hearing from you. Hello, Les. Maybe I'm becoming more and more dense with the passage of time, but I still don't understand why you'd want me to send the payment to an individual person's checking account payable to that individual rather than payable to the bank itself. That, of course, would assume I have $2,380 lying around, which I don't. The only thing I have lying around is dunning notices from various utilities and other providers, as well as some new legal documents that are related to an entirely different matter. Also, I don't know what you're referring to when you say I should send a copy of my payment slip to the bank. In this context, we are discussing at the moment. What payment slip are you referring to? Pals, Rob. Rob, you need to understand that payment slip receipt simply means a copy of the paper confirmation that would be given to you when you send the payment to the bank's agent. You are making us go in circles, Rob. I'm starting to feel like you've lost touch with time. What's going on, pal? You said we could proceed, and that made me liquidate my shares and commit that huge sum. So wh what are you saying to me? You can't afford $2,380? We really need to complete this deal sooner than later. Hello, Les. Your most recent message is confusing in the extreme, so much so that I barely know where to begin this response. So my comments might jump around a bit as I try to include at least the most important elements at issue. You refer to the security deposit that would activate the account without problems. Since when do banks charge a security deposit to open an account? Is that in case you steal all the ballpoint pens from the teller's windows? Nowhere in the online application did it say there would be any type of charge or a security deposit required to open the account. At your request, I did open an account with KeyQuest Bank, after which I mentioned to you that they have a lot of broken links that lead nowhere, which of course is not typical of a well-run, trustworthy financial organization. Just a sample of their many links that go nowhere. Their Facebook page, their Twitter page, their LinkedIn page, all four links listed in their fraud alert message center, email and phishing scam information, consumer online shopping tips, ATM and gas pump skimming information, taxpayer guide to identity theft, their online education center, which invites visitors to take advantage of our extensive library of online personal and business resources. Their extensive library consists entirely of links that go nowhere. But wait, there's more. According to their website, KeyQuest Bank offers 13 branch locations in the greater Omaha, Nebraska, and Council Bluffs, Iowa area. But their 24-hour automated phone service isn't in Nebraska, it's not in Iowa, it's in Indiana. And no matter what time of the day or night I've tried to call them, there was no answer. No live person answering the phone, no automated system answering the phone. I mentioned all of that stuff in a long email to a cousin of mine who's a pretty well-known lawyer barrister in Hull, England. He said it sounded fishy to him and had one of his paralegals research both the bank and its website, and you won't believe what they learned. One, the bank's website has been in existence since August 2022. That is three months. That's all. Just three months, and before that, they never existed. Two, Although the bank is in Nebraska and in Iowa, and their telephone that no one ever answers is in Indiana, guess who registered the domain, that's the formal name of the website, and where? The registrant contact, administrative contact, and technical contact are all the same person, 
some guy named Harry Parker, who lives in Shepherdstown, West Virginia, which, as you know, isn't anywhere near Nebraska or Iowa or anywhere. It sounds as though someone is trying to rip you off big time. I hope you have a way of getting your money back from the local lawyer in the UK who apparently instructed you to get involved with this shady-sounding bank. Finally, how in the world did you get the idea that I have $2,380 lying around, especially after the hurricane pretty much destroyed my house, as well as some other things that have occurred? You've always been a trusting person, which I think is admirable, but I fear that this time you've trusted some shady characters who don't have your best interests at heart and who certainly don't give a darn about my welfare either. As your longtime friend, I urge you to demand that the UK lawyer return your money and that you don't send any money at all to any of these weird banks that seem to be working together to get their hands on your money, to which they are not entitled. I hope it's not too late for you to recover however much money you gave to that shady UK lawyer. Please, now more than ever, you need to be careful when contemplating entering new financial ventures with strangers. Looks as though it's finally dawned on Les, or Leslie, or LD, or whoever, that I don't have any money for him to steal. Here is his farewell email. If you listen closely, you'll hear his tears silently running down his cheeks. Thanks for the information, pal. I'll see about it. I've had a crazy busy week, and hopefully should have some free time to myself over the weekend. Pals, Les. And that's the last I've heard from Leslie L. D. Holt, whether with two T's or just one. After all those years, Les and I have known each other, and after everything we've been through on this unpredictable, often illogical thing we call life, I still can't help thinking about Janie and what happened that night. Especially the second time. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel so you'll know whenever I've added a new scam baiting email video. If you'll be kind enough to comment below on your reactions to this video, I promise to make sure Rob sees it. It's been an honor to share this scam baiting adventure with you. In sincerity and on behalf of Rob, Rob McClint.